Alright everyone, this is Tech here. This is another quick video for Crusader Kings 2. What this particular video here is going to be is kind of a follow-up video to the tutorial series that I did, which was the first five parts. And what I'm going to do with this video actually is I've gotten a fair amount of uh, private messages asking questions about certain elements, um, along with some, uh, some of the questions posted actually within the, the past five videos. So, kind of, I've had, I don't know, about four or five uh, topics um, asked over and over, and I'm going to go ahead and do this video to kind of address just some of the more popular questions and, and topics that people are asking me about. So it'll kind of be broke, I'm going to break this into just parts because I'm probably going to have to load different save games to, to try to get the, the best uh, scenario where I can show uh, the topic that we're discussing. So anyway, without holding out any longer, let's move on to the first one. Alright, the first question here for the video is, um, I had a couple of people asking um, at the end of the warfare video when I had conquered uh, Valencia, as you can see here, um, is how do you actually decrease your domain size? Um, as you can see up here at the top, for um, Dements, which is how I've been pronouncing it, but I guess it's actually pronounced domain, but your, the number of domains that you have, I'm over the limit. You see it's up here, it's at 9 of 7. And so how do you reduce that? Well, you reduce that by having to hand off those uh, extra domains to vassals or children or, or what have you. Um, and I'll show you how that works real quick. The easy way to, first of all, to, to see, to get a basic understanding of how it works is let's click on Valencia, the one that we actually uh, took over. Looking at the screen over here, you can see is that there's there's three different um, areas within this domain. Okay, you have here Valencia, the county capital, which when you hover over that, you can kind of see what the base tax and all that kind of stuff is. And then over here, you can see we have the city of Gandia and uh, Bishopric of Extavia, Extavia, whatever. Um, you'll also notice that when I hover over these two down here, it says the holder is of the wrong type. Um, Generally, and I don't really have the full, probably proper explanation behind it, but we, you personally, as since I'm playing as the king character, you don't want to be holding the the, the church bishoprics and the in the uh, cities. Um, that's for mayors and bishops to hold those. Generally, you just want to hold the county because as long as you hold control of the county, everything under it, as long as you meet certain requirements and conditions, is paying to you because you are quote unquote you know the governor of this province domain county whatever you want to call it um, so basically we hold on to the county we want to hold on to Valencia the county um, for our character our king but we want to get rid of these two and hand them off okay so that's that's basically uh, how that works now there's a couple different ways to to actually do that, you can actually um, create a new vassal with those by just right clicking on it, which I haven't really ever done it that way. Usually I manually hand it off and we can go ahead and try this and just see how it works. But see, you can do that and it just automatically does it. Now who it actually handed it off to is a good question. Um, I'll have to look at it here for a second. I didn't, like I said, I've never really done that before. The other way to, so first of all, you can do that way. If you're just in a hurry and you just want to hand it off, you're not really concerned with it, is you can just right click on it and hand it off. Now let's say, okay, I handed off the bishopric. That's fine. We, we took care of that, but we still have, we're still eight of seven. We want to hand off one more. And let's just say I want to hand this city off to one of my sons, for instance. Well, you can go to the character screen here. Let's go to my younger son here, who's nine, and let's just say I want to hand off the city to him uh, to go ahead and give him a, a claim because I already have um, my elder son. He already, I've already handed him off the city of Teril, Teril, which I believe is over in in this uh, domain here. Um, so I just want to go ahead and give my other son a title, you know. So. <laughs> 
we're just going to hand it off to him. So the way that you can do that is you can actually click on whoever the character is that you want to hand a domain or a city or whatever the case may be. Click on that character, right click them and go to diplomacy and then you can go right here to grant landed title, the top button. Click on grant landed title and it will show you all the areas that you're capable of handing off. So, and if you look at this list here, you'll see that I have, it's mostly all counties. County of Burgos, County of Alberson, etc., Soria, uh, Valladolid, which is the one I got back from, you know, our du jour claim. Um, Soria, Zamora, which is the one over here. So, I mean, I'm holding all these counties, but then if you look down here at the bottom of the list, I have City of Gandia, which I don't need to have that one. So, I want to give City of Gandia to my son. And it says right here, grant City of Gandia to Prince Elvis, <laughs> increasing his opinion of you by 20. And we just say, yes, that's what we want to do. Now you notice up here our domain size now, we're not in the red anymore. We're at 7 to 7, perfect, right where we want to be at, actually. So now we got seven different counties that are falling under us that we can collect tax income from. And if you click around, you'll be able to see the tax income as the game goes on. So for instance, even the even this one here that I got not too long ago and converted over to Catholics, I am starting to get actual tax income from them now. I'm getting 5.1. Um, this one was just converted, so I haven't got anything out of it. And then this one here, we're going to have our guys work on converting it, and it will eventually turn over. Um, so that's basically how you that's how you get your domain size to where it needs to be is you can actually like I said you can either go into it right click on it and do uh, you, you know to hand it off automatically or you can actually go in and go through your vassals go through your children and then manually hand it off to whoever you need to and that way you can get under the domain limit so that you're not uh, at a risk of revolts and things like that All right, our next question is, is a lot of people, and this is a, a common question that I see in the forums in various places and, and all that, is a lot of people in getting used to this style of a strategy game are, are still not always clear on the ways that you can acquire a new domain or county. Um, basically, you can't just do like say any, like a typical, you know, like a civilization or, or some other strategy games where just, you know, whatever, pull your army together and go get that that air, that zone. <laughs> you know, you can't really do that in this game because you do have to have a reason for going to war and taking a county region from someone else. Um, so there's a couple different ways, um, and we've discussed some of them in the tutorial series, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of outline all of them here very quickly and then actually show one that I didn't, one way to do it that I didn't discuss that actually I just learned in the last day or so um, from playing the game and, and readings from uh, notes from other people. So um, the first way is the way we saw in the warfare video is you can do holy war. Um, holy war is usually something that can be done against the, the Sunni type states or the um, pagan states. You know, anyone who's not Catholic, basically you're, you're, you can take the the stance and reasoning of it's a holy war of converting the infidels to the catholic religion and the pope will authorize you to be able to do that so any of these countries down here for instance um, if you go and look at um, Almanza here uh, they, it's a Sunni state if I go into diplomacy and declare war you can see um, I have a whole bunch of uh, holy war <laughs> clauses for how I, why I can go and attack them um, and you know do it without really any kind of penalty or anything else however if I go over and try to look at say one of my brother's areas over here and try to declare war with him the only way I'm gonna get away with it is if it's a Ducal claim and then remember that a Ducal claim is because of the the territorial um, history uh, territorial rights based on certain counties being, um, you know, from ancient territorial laws being uh, considered a set, so to speak. Um, so you can always use that as a reason to go to war. And remember over here that since I own, uh, I believe it's uh, this area here, I think these four, which we can take a look here, wherever it's at. Or no, actually it's the ones all up here. 
this whole this whole area here is considered um, to be the same area and but I, however I don't hold all of those I hold these but I can claim I can go to war because of these three counties because they're supposed to you know be a set so to speak and so if I didn't have those or if I already had these say I already had these three I w then would not have a reason to go to war with him over these counties over here because those are no longer you know considered a, a, a proper reason for going to war um, there's some other things that can happen, various uh, types of deals. However, there's one other which I will cover. One kind of a sneaky way that you can get into some areas um, if you're really paying attention and take uh, advantage of some opportunities. Um, well, actually, however, before I show that, the, the, another way is the long-term conversion, which is through your bloodlines and marrying. Um, you can go and marry into an area and say you have a king um, you know, say I'm over here, but I have a, there's a king of Brittany or whatever, um, who doesn't have a wife, and I marry a sister or a daughter, I met, marry a, a sister or a daughter to that king, they have a son, which is then my grandson, he then dies, and my grandson takes over, and then my king dies, but names him the heir before he dies, then the king of Brittany, who is my grandson, I will start to play him, and he will take over both Brittany and Castile. That would be like a long-term way to acquire land areas. You know, obviously it requires a couple of people dying and things going in the, in the proper order, but that, is, of course, is a, is a long-term game goal. Um, for instance, in the one game that I'm playing with Denmark, um, the king of Poland is married to my uh, daughter, my king's daughter, and um, my character, that is. And um, they've already had a son who is my grandson. So, you know, through a, a period of time, if I played it right, you know, when my, when my character, who's the king, dies here really soon, or whatever, and say in one of the games, and a son takes over, um, the son could then name that you know his nephew uh which no i guess actually it would be yeah it would be like his nephew could name him the heir and just you know i could have that king's purposely not get married or not have kids or whatever um and then when he dies you know potentially i could take over both say poland and denmark at that point which would be then pretty cool you know a pretty good move at that that's a lot of land mass you get that way um, but anyway, moving on, the last way I wanted to show you is there is a way that you can actually invite someone to court. This is some, a way that I actually I learned through um, another player f through the Steam forums. But you can actually look for claimants to a certain area, invite them to your court, and then press that claim. And I'll show you the best example I can kind of find. It does, you know, you have to look around and find areas that have it but you could go I, I did look around real quick before I started this video this zone right here in Puris or whatever if you click on the actual county click on their crest you can go into here and say say for county of Puris or however you pronounce it there's a button here claimants that if it's highlightable you can click this claimants button these are all people who supp supposedly quote unquote have claims to the county of Puris of this area all these people have claims. Now when you look at this list, you're going to notice there's a little icon right here. It's either a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And you can see the majority of these are all thumbs down. And if you hover over it, it says, would not accept an invitation to our court. However, if you look down this list, hey, look, here's a guy with a green thumb up that says he would accept an invitation to our court. So we could actually go into here and there's a button right here right click on them the guy with the thumb up and do invite to court and send now if we let the clock go here for a second we'll see how long it takes okay he has accepted the invitation to come to our court and what's his name again Pierre okay so there he is right there Pierre has arrived at our court. So let's pause it again for a second here. Okay, so then actually once you have him at court here, I just want to make sure I was clear on that. I pause it for just a quick second. Um, he is in our court now. 
and again just to redo it one last time I want to make sure I had it all correct okay here he is Pierre de Impires is in court and what we can do now is you can go over here and you can look at what the, ki the actual kingdom is um, who is uh, actually Air Aragon here or whatever is these guys if you go and actually go into their menu now you can go to declare war it'll be an option and if you look right here look at the reasons why I can go to war one of them is claim impures and you can even see the portrait of Pierre de impures he's our courier, uh, courier courtier and we can actually claim war uh, you know declare war upon them because of you know our vassal one of our vassals says that's his you know county and actually if you notice here we actually have another claim to Rosello which is this one right here so we can actually and this may be something that I would do since these guys are kinda gonna get paying the butt and a ninja land from us and all is I can claim that these two areas are ours and go to war for them so that's another kinda back doorway to be able to to declare war on somebody I mean it's not gonna work for every area you know if I go here to Molina and look for instance look there's no claimants I mean there's just you, you can't do it everywhere but when it does work out it's a great way it's a great other alternative um, to, to being able to go and declare war you know obviously the other way that I didn't mention I guess kinda of the the fifth way is obviously with using your chancellor you can send your chancellor to fabricate claims in an area and eventually he'll find some you know he'll pay some people off and you know make some bribes and all this kind of stuff to make you be able to claim more because of some you know trumped up charge type thing so again a couple different ways are the holy war um, the du jour claims you can go and invite uh, a claimant from an area into your court and then that can give you a reason you can use your chancellor to fabricate claims so those are all different ways that you can try to use um, the different tools so to speak that you have to try to claim uh, new counties and areas okay another question that a lot of people bring up sometimes is in regards to the taxes that you receive the how is it determined um, why you're getting certain tax money from some areas and not from others um, well first of all the easiest thing to understand is that you're only going to be receiving taxes from areas that you are the direct person in control of it so for instance um, my character here in the same game that we've been looking at um, Burgos for instance actually all three of these areas and if you click on them you can see that my king my character's portrait is on them all of these if you look right here at the little gold coin area for total county tax the first number the second number the big number is how much total county tax there is the, like the yearly income well as you hover it over it says total yearly income and then the smaller number to the left is the yearly tax paid to us which means me um, and if I click on these you can see Burgos I'm getting 9.2 here I'm getting 6.2 here I'm getting 10.2 but if you click over on Vizcaya you'll notice my portraits no longer here it's someone else and you can see that it's actually zero I'm not getting any of that tax money because that's not my area um, so that's kind of the easy way to see it so to speak um, however breaking it down to the, the the next level so to speak is you can actually look and there's three different things capable of paying you tax money there's the actual county capital there's any and then there's any like cities and and other buildings you know within that area now if you look at this area let's take Burgos as an example if you look here and you hover over this tax thing in the pop-up there you can see that the total yearly income and then the yearly tax paid to us and you can see for Palencia there which Palencia is the actual capital the, you know the main city so to speak um, it's saying 583 so we're getting all of that tax money and then you can see for Burgos it says that its total is 1364 but you know we're then getting 341 of that you know which basically we're kind of getting you know just a percentage 
of that, um, which I guess that's about 10% is kind of what about what you're getting, so to speak. But so you say, well, wait a minute, there's three things here. Why are we only getting tax money from two when this is a, a county that we are in control of? Well, that's a good question, and I can show you. Palencia we're getting the money from, obviously, and Burgos we're getting the money from, okay? But we're not getting the money for the bishopric, which is nine times out of ten. The reason that is, is, and if you remember earlier in the video, that's because probably the bishop maybe likes the pope more than he likes me. And what we can do is we can look quickly here at this. And there's probably a lot of ways that you can pull this up quickly. And the easiest way I always find, like for instance in this case, the, it's the bishopric of Silos. I could probably just go to the religion tab real quick because I know one of these bishops are going to have it. And here you go, you can see Bishop Tello. Um, which actually you could probably just go right in here and look at it. Right here, Tello, Bishop Tello, Tello. Um, you can look at it there. But we know that's who has it that particular one and if we go here and look Bishop Tello on the religion tab you can see right here look he does he has a higher opinion of the Pope which is 68 than he does of me which is 59 um, I could probably correct that pretty quickly by giving him a gift or something to that effect so then I could start getting that tax money um, you know there's other ways you could do it obviously you know grant him other titles and and things like that so that's why we're not getting that tax money. And to show you an example of where I am getting it, for instance, is let's take a look at, for instance, Zamora. Zamora over here, if we hover over it, look here, you can see there's three structures. There's a capital, a city, and another bishopric, church. Um, and if you look below here, it says Zamora, I'm getting 4.40, Torah, I'm getting 3.05, and Benevente, I'm getting 2.8. So, if we look here at Bishopic Benevente and click on it, it's Aurelio, Bishop Aurelio. And if we go in here, Bishop Aurelio, and we can hover over here, and it looks like I've actually given him uh, two different. He's my court chaplain, and I've actually given him two different uh, church provinces, so to speak. Um, and if we look over here, he has a 100% opinion of me but only a 58 of the Pope. That's why I'm receiving the tax money from him. Again, if the bishops or whoever, if they like, if the bishops like the Pope more than you, the bishop gets the money. If they like you more, then you get the tax money. So that's basically how that works. So that's, you know, if your income, if you, if you go into your religion tab and you notice that your bishops that you have assigned to all these different, you know, bishoprics, if none of them like you more than the Pope, that's a lot of money you're losing out on. So it's kind of something you just need to pay attention to.